have a question. What is your favorite song and how do you connect with it? Is it when you fell in love or through something really difficult? I'm your host, Tiffany Mason. Now join me as I interview others and we take a walk down memory lane with them. Let's get lost in why that music matters to them. Turn up your radio and let's explore Memories with a Beat. Hello, Podcast Land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Memories with a Beat. And today I have my friend Andrea with me and I found her on one of the Facebook groups saying, you know, like, hey, anybody want to talk about a song that they love? And she was one of them that was eager to reply. And I know she's super excited. So Andrea, welcome so much to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I am super excited. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think everybody always has to talk about business. So this is always a fun one for people to respond to because they get to talk about music, which is just right. enjoyable. So anyway, if you wouldn't mind, Andrea, would you let my audience know where you are and a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I am a PR strategist and copywriter for creatives. So musicians, artists, dancers, singers, writers, whatever, anybody who's in a creative role. And I help them to get seen, heard, and remembered by all the right people. Okay, tell me more. I'm so intrigued. (laughs) Yes. So what I do is I work with my clients to figure out from an audience alignment standpoint, what's the right media outlet, whether it be traditional media, digital media, trade publications, which are the best places for them to be seen by the right audience. And it has to be in alignment with the publication. Of course, you know, if you pitch somebody and you have no alignment to them, you're never going to hear back from them. So it has to be something that's in alignment and you have to have the right story to bring to them. That's going to be something that will resonate with that audience because that's what they care about. They don't really care about you and your business. They care about how can you help that, how to help their audience. Right. How did you get into that? Oh man, I started that when I was in college. That was my internship. So when I was in high school, I had two goals. My first goal was to be a wife and mother. That was going to be my profession. Just stay at home and be a wife and mother. <laughs> Loved it. That was truly my goal. I am not even making fun or anything. That was really my goal. Yeah. And the other one was, if that didn't work, was to be in advertising on Madison Avenue. And so when I got to college, I thought, well, I better figure out this advertising thing just in case. But I ended up with a PR internship instead and fell in love with PR. And that's how I started. My first PR campaign was when I was 20 years old at the Milwaukee Art Museum. So I just fell in love with it and have been doing it forever. Wow, that sounds like a great career. It had to have been super, I mean, obviously fulfilling, but did you get to like rub elbows with some famous people, some, you know, popular groups? The campaign was sponsored by Philip Morris and Miller Brewing. So Big Tobacco and Alcohol were the sponsors. So I got to rub elbows with, you know, muckety mucks in those big companies then when I was 20. And the artist themselves and the museum, you know, executives and all that. But then when I started working in music, yes, I did get to rub elbows with people would know. It was fun, but some of them were not as nice as you think they would be. Right. It kind of disappointing in some instances and then surprised in other instances. So you take the mixed bag, but it was nice to put my clients in positions, right, where they can be around people in the industry who could mentor them, which did happen. One of my clients got mentored by somebody who, you know, tours Nashville internationally and things like that. From that perspective, it was nice. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm envious. It sounds like fun to me. So I know there's more that goes into it than just meeting famous people, though. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So have you always lived in Wisconsin? I have. Yes. You have. Okay. I moved from the north end of my city to the south end. That's as far as I've gotten. (laughs) (laughs) Ever. Okay. The reason why I ask that is I am born and raised in Iowa. Okay. And then I lived most of my adult married life in Minnesota. Okay. So very natural rivals against the Packers. Right. And so, yeah, just makes me think of home a little bit. Okay. You do the PR stuff now, but you do a freelance style now, right? Yes. Right. And then I also write copy. I do either or or both. Okay. 
depending on the need. Okay. Interesting. Do you do it for books as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, if you wouldn't mind, so it turns out I knew this song, but I didn't know I knew this song. And so I'm wondering how many of my listeners are going to have the same reaction when they go to the playlist and listen to the song. Yeah. But if you wouldn't mind, Andrea, will you please fill my audience in on what song you chose and feel free to go into a little bit, you know, why you chose that and maybe what you are reminded of when you hear the song or where you are when that song comes on. Sure. I chose Peg from Steely Dan and I did not hear it when it came out because I know I dated myself before, but I didn't hear it when it originally came out. I just was turned on to it maybe less than 10 years ago, I think. Steely Dan overall. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But I have to tell you that in that time, Steely Dan has become one of my favorite groups ever. Like it's Jimi Hendrix and then it's Steely Dan Okay, <laughs> for me. <laughs> and yeah, because they are so good musically. And the more I learn about them reading articles or watching documentaries, the more I realize just how precise mm. all of that was. And then watching about Peg, you know, they use studio musicians. Steely Dan used studio musicians for all of their work, all their albums, which was really interesting to me because okay. they didn't want to have a backing band because they wanted to have that different sound depending on what the record was. They had West Coast musicians, East Coast musicians. And so they would go into studio with studio musicians and record all of that fantastic music, including Peg. And they had Michael McDonald singing the background on Peg. Ah. And it was, yeah, they were so deep in the vision to get the vision of the song. They had him sing it note for note. Like he didn't sing the word Peg. He didn't sing it as a phrase. He sang it as notes. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I wonder how they even had the idea to do that. I don't know. They were crazy visionary, you know, when they were recording. What I also like about them and this song is that you can't really pin it down stylistically. Is it jazz? Is it R&B? Is it yeah. pop? Is it a mix of it? Is it fusion? Yeah. Like you can't really pinpoint <laughs> <laughs> what it is. And that's how I feel about me, about myself, especially when it comes to music. Like, don't try and put me in a box because you'll never get the right one. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm so many different things, like so many different types of music. And I think that that is what's attracting me to them. Sure. That makes total sense because it's kind of a mixed bag and you feel like you're a mixed bag. And yeah, I'm kind of the same way where I have a pretty eclectic taste in music as well. Just pretty much anything. I'm not a big fan of hardcore rap, but other than that, yeah, an instrumental. I like a story. Give me a story. So give me some words and lyrics, you know. Yeah. And so when you think about Peg, so people are probably thinking, why would you pick that downer of a song? <laughs> <laughs> I pick it because it reminds me of my clients, honestly, because, you know, the song is it's a little bit of unrequited love and it's a little bit about the seedy side of celebrity and wanting to be a celeb. And even Donald Fagan said that it's kind of like the reverse of All About Eve. Do you remember that movie with Betty Davis? No. Oh, it's a really good movie. Actually, it's one of my favorite movies too. That movie is about the youngster, Ann Baxter, who is trying to follow, you know, and take over the career of her mentor, mm -hmm. which is Betty Davis. This song, Peg, is about the reverse of that. And it's about an older woman who's trying to get into the industry and kind of usurp the youth, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit about the photographer who was in love with her and they broke up and all of that stuff. But it's also about her being, I guess you could call it a social climber who's trying to make it in the industry. Now, I know I said that this reminds me of my clients. I don't think that my clients are social climbers, but what I meant by that is because of all of the things that you encounter when you think about people being taken advantage of in the industry, poor contracts, right? Mm -hmm. Or not good dealings when they go to clubs and they don't get paid. Like All of that stuff mm -hmm. is what I am trying to help prevent. Yeah, I'm not a booking agent. I'm not a manager. I'm not any of those things. But in the course of working with me, I'm still providing some input on that, some guidance on that. And that's what I really love to do. I want to help people make it. I want to help musicians make it. I want them to be thriving. I don't want them to be worried about, are they going to be taken advantage right. of? Yeah. Hey, Podcast Land. I have another question for you. Would you like to learn for free how to get more downloads of your podcast? 
Social media is not our friend. And I want to show you how to repurpose your podcast episodes to virtually amplify your podcast presence by taking bite-sized pieces out of each episode and getting more exposure. I've created a workshop just for you, my fellow podcasters, titled The Down Low on Downloads. Go to virtuallyuva.com and get it for free. The link is in the show notes. Pause this episode, get it open in your browser, and tonight when you're winding down from the day, you can check it out. Don't go another month wanting more downloads but struggling to figure out how. This is how. And it's totally free for now. Well, if you don't mind, will you pull the lyrics up? I'd like to go through it a little bit if that's yeah. okay. Because I was trying to make heads or tails out of it. And I will be honest, I don't think I was very successful. Oh, <laughs> So I'll have you walk me through it. Yeah. Let me find the part. It will come back to you. That's the part I was thinking of. Like he did all of those as individual words instead of the whole phrase. So interesting to me. In the first verse, you know, this is when the photographer that she was dating is talking about, I see your picture everywhere. I see your name. You got your big debut. So why don't you come and smile for me? It's kind of like, why don't you come back to me now that you're on the rise, right? Like, okay. I know that your fans are going to love you, but I love you even more kind of thing. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Now, do you think that he wanted her to be done with it or he just wanted to be by her side as she was on this climb? That's a really good question. I think that he wanted to be by her side. Yeah, I kind of get that feeling too. I think he wanted to be part of it. Yeah. If we read into it, if this is how the song started, right, there had to have been good time. If he's a photographer, she was on the rise. He probably took a lot of her first photos. So he was probably feeling like, okay, I've been here from the beginning. Yeah. These people don't really know you. They're going to take it advantage of you. I'm not going to do that. I really love you. They may appear like they love you and you might smile pretty for their cameras, but neither one is going to be real. Yeah. Okay. And I think that this whole song itself is pretty unique, right? Because it's verse, verse, and then chorus, chorus, chorus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like there's no verse, chorus. Yeah. And then they told the story about how I like your pin shot instead of pin up. You know, it's usually said as a pin up, but they called it pin shot because it's a little seedier. And it fit, again, with the vision of how they wanted to structure the way the song was sung. Okay. So interesting, right? So then he's talking about, okay, you know, I found the letter that you wrote me. I found the Dear John letter and I found all of these photos and everything really looks good on you. And when you smile for those cameras, you sure do look good. You know, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I in these pictures? <laughs> yep. Yep. And then when you get to the chorus, it's like, okay, I'm fed up with you now. Every Everything that you've done is going to come right back to you. All of the nasty things you've done to me are going to come back to you. And I see it. Okay. So I was trying to, you know, make heads or tails. And I thought he was saying something to the extent of like, you've worked really hard and that will come back to you. But I get it now. Karma is a B. Yeah. And you're going to get it, Peg. Yep. Because <laughs> you're not including yep. me in what you got going on. Right. Mm. Yeah. And then, you know, how he keeps saying it's your favorite foreign movie yeah. because... You know, foreign movies are not as widely viewed as movie blockbusters, the studio blockbusters. So how far are you really going to go after all the things that you've done to get there? Oh, wow. Okay. And so you learned all this from just kind of watching the documentaries and stuff? And yeah, and reading articles. Now, do you normally do that when you start to like a group or whatever? Jimi Hendrix, I mean, have you listened to a ton of his stuff? Yep. Okay. So that's yep. a thing. I even have a book about Jimi. Okay. I like documentaries anyway yeah. so I watch them because it's interesting to me to learn about you know various artists and about the industry and things like that those behind the musics were amazing learning tools and then I think to myself for all of these artists who came afterwards did you not pay attention to what they were <laughs> saying you know? well and it has to give you some kind of insider's knowledge for even your business right mm -hmm. you got to think like okay this is what they did and then, okay, let me play off of that and let me do this for this client now kind of idea. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Because I'm not a musician. I'm not an artist. So I don't have firsthand knowledge. Right. Right. I have to do as much research as possible and try and figure out what happened, what should not happen. Mm -hmm. Right. How do you do it better or different to get a better or different result? Yeah. And I enjoy doing that because, like I said, I don't want my clients to be pegs, right? I don't want them to fall for the scams and the cons and the seedy side of the business. I want them to be 
happy and thriving and enjoy being musicians. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. It probably gives you a lot of passion in your position as well. I mean, having mm-hmm. that passion fuels it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like having a child and the child succeeds and then you as the parent are so proud of them. And that's enough that it fills your cup since you're not the artist or the writer or, you know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Because I've had clients who've gone on and done some really great things. I publicize their accomplishments. I don't publicize my own right. because even though I helped them achieve those things, it still was their achievement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a podcast producer and it's the same thing. You know, when people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have a podcast. I'm like, I know you did all the work. I just polished it up, cleaned it up a little bit, but you did all the work. Yeah. Yeah. So I can appreciate that feeling that you have of being behind the scenes and then being able to see them succeed is reward enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else that you want to add about this song, Andrea? I just think it's a great song. I think all of their songs are pretty (laughs) great. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. I just appreciate the fact that it was so well produced, Mm -hmm. so well recorded, so well visualized. It was one of their top songs on their top album. So Interesting. Yeah. I'll have to go check out more of them. I, through this podcast, have learned that maybe some older music is worth discovering for me. So I'm excited about Mm -hmm. that. So I'll have to go check out some more Steely Dan and See what strikes my ear the right way. <laughs> there is a tribute band here called Steely Dane and because they're from Dane County. So it kind of works well. And I've seen them three times now. I've seen Steely Dan once or twice. I can't remember. And of course, Steely Dan was better. I'm not saying that. But I will tell you <laughs> that this tribute band, Steely Dane, does a really good ah. job of paying tribute to Steely Dan. Okay. It's not like they're up there just slouching. Slopping through it. They're doing a good job. Yeah. They really are putting in the time to make sure that they are as close as they can get to the original. Wow. That's amazing. Well, you guys heard it. If you're in Wisconsin, go up. You got to check out Steely Dane because they give Steely Dan a run for his money. (laughs) (laughs) And that's coming from an expert who loves Steely Dan. So they must be pretty good. Yes. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Andrea. Thank you. Yes. Podcast land. I hope this episode was music to your ears. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? You never know what rabbit holes we'll get to go down and explore. Were you reminded of anything or anyone? Share what it was with me in a review. Honestly, the reviews don't do me any favors other than knowing people like you are listening to this podcast. Insert cheesy wink. (laughs) However, the ratings do help. So leave me five stars. You know you want to. This podcast was produced by Virtual You, supporting you in all things podcasting. To connect or check me out on social media, I mean, I know you're just going to stalk me. (laughs) But see the show notes, as always, for details. Can't wait to dive into my next guest's memories with a beat. Hit subscribe now. You don't want to miss the next episode.